It is not always an easy job to locate surface ships from the air, especially at night or in bad visibility conditions. This ASV is a method of finding ships by using radio waves which can travel in darkness or through the dirtiest weather. ASV is a great help tool in many other problems met by coastal and fleet air arm aircraft, such as spotting and helming on surface submarines, navigation by coast charting, and making landfalls. Let's see how this ASV works. Suppose we are in an aircraft which is flying over the sea, and we make this aircraft send out radio waves into the air around it. Then, as the aircraft travels along, these waves will meet things and be reflected, and some of them will come back to the aircraft. For instance, the sea beneath the aircraft will reflect some of the waves. So will a ship, or a submarine on the surface, or an island, or a coastline. The best way of using radio waves for this job is to send them out from our aircraft in little packets. Each of these packets is shown here as a white circle spreading out from the aircraft. Our reconnaissance aircraft, we're showing a Hudson here, is fitted with a special wireless transmitter for sending out these radio packets, or pulses, as they're called. The transmitting aerial is fixed on the front of the aircraft and it shoots the pulses out in front of the aircraft something like this, but at the rate of 500 pulses a second, much faster than we can show them here. These pulses shoot out into space and hit things, such as ships, and get reflected back again to our aircraft as echoes, which we pick up with a special receiver. Now, our Hudson wants to know just where the ship is, its range, and, more important still, which way we must turn if we want to helm onto it. First of all, let's see how we find the ship's range from us. These pulses, which are reflected from the ship back to our aircraft, are picked up by the receiving aerials, which are fixed on the fuselage. They are then fed into the receiver, and out again to an indicator called a cathode ray tube. This cathode ray tube is so made that we can get a small spot of light on the tube face and make this spot move in any way we please over the face and as fast as we like. So we make the spot of light move in a straight line up the center of the face from bottom to top. Move very quickly down to the bottom and do it again. We make it keep this up all the time, at the rate of 500 times a second, so that what you see is a straight line, or trace, of light. This line is called the time base. We arrange that the pulses make the spot move to the left and back again, so that when the transmitter sends out a pulse, the spot does a little kink, like this. Then the time base makes it move up, so and the spot does this a bit later, when the pulse comes back again as an echo from a ship. Now, we arrange that each pulse leaves the transmitter at exactly the same instant as the spot of light starts its journey up the trace, so that this kink caused by the transmitter pulse happens exactly at the bottom of the trace every time. And, therefore, since each pulse takes the same time to travel to the ship and back, the kink caused by the echo will happen at exactly the same place up the trace every time. So this is what the spot keeps on doing. And when it does it 500 times a second, it looks like this. Remember, this is the transmitter pulse, and this is the echo, or in service jargon, the blip. But what happens if there is more than one ship? Well, we will get two separate blips on our tube face. 
Now the pulses which go out to ship number two have further to go than those which go out to ship number one. So they will come back later. And the blip from ship number two will happen further up the time base than the blip from number one. If number two is twice as far from us as number one, number two's blip will happen twice as far up the time base. In fact, the distance along the time base from the transmitter pulse to the blip gives us the way of finding the ship's range from us. We have a scale which is fixed in front of the tube face, and from the position of the blip on this scale, we can read off the range of the ship. But we want to find correctly the ranges of ships close to us, and at the same time, to spot ships a long way off. To do this, we have three different time bases which we can use. The first shows our ships up to a distance of nine nautical miles. The second goes up to 36, and the third up to 90 nautical miles. Suppose there are two ships, one eight miles from us, and the other 20. Then this is what their blips look like on the three different scales. But there is still one thing wrong with this picture. We've not said anything about the sea itself. The sea beneath us, and for some way all round, will send our pulses back to us as echoes, or rather, as one big spread out pattern. Our picture should really look like this. All this is what comes back from the sea, or the sea returns. If we climb, we get more sea returns. If we lose height, we get less. But although we've now found the range of the ship, we want to know something still more important. It's bearing from our line of flight. This is how we do it. Instead of having just one receiving aerial, we have a pair of them, one for port and the other for starboard. If you think of these two aerials as being able to look for the pulses coming in, then in this picture, the port aerial is arranged to look hardest in this part, and the starboard aerial to look hardest in this part. So that if the ship is to port, the pulse it sends back to us will be picked up better by our port aerial than by our starboard one, and we will get a bigger blip from the port aerial. If the ship is to starboard, our starboard aerial will pick it up better and give us the bigger blip. So that by comparing the size of the blips picked up by each aerial, we can tell where the pulse is coming from. This is the Hudson's port receiving aerial, and this is the starboard one. The pulses which these two aerials pick up are fed into the receiver through a special switch and out again through the same switch to our cathode ray tube. You remember the picture on the tube looked like this. This is the picture we get from our port aerial. We arrange that our starboard aerial gives us a picture like this. When the special switch turns round, what it does is to switch the picture from each aerial in turn onto the cathode ray tube. Now, when the switch is working properly, it turns round quite fast, about 30 turns a second, and what we see on the tube face is this. Remember in this picture, left hand blip from port aerial, right hand blip from starboard aerial. So this is the picture we see on our ASV set when we find a ship. If we are pointing straight at the ship, the blips will be equal on either side of the time base. If the ship is to port, the left-hand blip will stick out more. If it is to starboard, the right-hand blip will stick out more. If we want to helm on the ship, we must maneuver our aircraft so that the blips from the ship stick out equally on either side of the time base by turning our aircraft towards the bigger blip. But if we bank steeply, say to port, 
our port aerial will be looking to port and downward, whilst our starboard aerial is looking to starboard and upwards. Therefore, our turns must be slow, flattish ones, or else we'll get false indications. <laughs> 